Greetings everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wild Life Wisdom. As so far I've been your host, Zero Yeti. And apologies if you can hear noise in the background. It's negative 8 degrees outside Fahrenheit. And I refuse to turn off my space here. So without further ado, let's get into it. When we're doing another Extinct Animal Week. Because why not? Uh, Hynernia, or Hynernia, is a genus of large prehistoric predatory lobe-finned fish which live throughout the freshwater and brackish environments of what is now North America and Africa. During the Famininian stage of the Devonian period, some 371 to 358 million years ago, the first remains of Hynernia, or I don't know why I keep throwing a second in in there, Hynaria consisting of a disarticulated partial skull and fragments of a shoulder girdle, were found in the Catskill formation of the Red Hill Shale by Keith Stewart Thompson in 1968. The genus name Hynaria is in reference to the village of Heiner, Pennsylvania, near which the first specimen was found, with the species name Linde being a reference to Keith's wife. Since then, several dozen specimens have been found representing two species, H. Linde and H. Udelzine, uh, reaching some 6.6 to 13.1 or 2 to 4 meters in length. Hynaria sported a heavy skull with ornamented dermal bones and a long, shallow lower jaw. The teeth were stout, with those of the premaxilla forming fangs. Its body was covered by cycloid scales and it had large sensory canals to aid it in the detection of possible prey, as the freshwater environments it would have inhabited were likely were murky, and thus had low visibility. It had powerful fins, but the popularized image of Hynaria using them to crawl across land is to date only speculation. It is likely they would have been more use while navigating shallow waters and submerged obstacles. In life, Hynaria would have acted as a large aquatic predator, which fed upon other fish, including sharks, as well as invertebrates and tendospondyl amphibians. Next up is Kentrosaurus, which is a genus of stegosaurid dinosaur, which lived throughout what is now Africa during the... Cambridgean and Tithonian ages of the Jurassic period, some 154 to 145 million years ago. The first fossils of Kentrosaurus, consisted of the partial remains of over 50 individuals, were discovered by the German Tendaguru expedition in 1909. These remains were described by German paleontologist Edwin Hinning in 1915, who gave them the name Kentrosaurus from the Greek Kitron, meaning sharp point or prickle, and Soros, meaning lizard, with the sorry specific name Anthiopictus denoting the province from Africa in which the remains were found. As of today, roughly 350 specimens have been recovered. Kentrosaurus once almost lost its name because of the Ceratopsian dinosaur Centrosaurus, which gave rise to the alternate names of Kentro or of Kentrosaurus and Dryophorosaurus. However, not only are the names Kentrosaurus and Centrosaurus spelled differently, they are pronounced differently, with the Kentrosaurus having a kicking K, while Centrosaurus has a soft C pronounced more like an S. This is why renaming was never really required, and those formerly mentioned names are just considered synonyms. Reaching some 13-15 feet in length, or 4 to 4.5 meters in length, and 1,500 to 3,500 pounds, or 700 to 1,600 kilograms in weight, Kintrosaurus was comparatively small for a stegosaur, characterized by a small head and long neck, short forelimbs and long hind limbs, as well as a large, horizontal muscular tail. The said long tail of Kentrosaurus results in a position of the center of mass that is unusually far back for a quadrupedal animal, meaning that Kentrosaurus would have been surprisingly agile and flexible. The most impressive feature of Kentrosaurus has to be its armaments, which consisted of a pair of long shoulder spikes and an array of plates and spikes running along both sides of the top midline of the animal. 
resulting in the animal possessing a staggering 12 thagomizers. In life, Kentrosaurus likely lived in herds, browsing upon low to mid-level vegetation, alongside other dinosaurs such as Giraffa Titan, Tornaria, Dislotosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, Elaphosaurus, or Elaphrosaurus, Dicreosaurus, and Veteropristiosaurus. I do not know if I pronounced that right. Next up, we have Campahillus principalis, better known as the ivory billed woodpecker, the log cock, the log god, Lord Godbird, Indian hen, Kent Kate, Poule de Bois, or the Titka, is a likely extinct species of woodpecker that has native to the bottomland hardwood forests and temper- temperate coniferous forests of the southern United States and Cuba. These birds feed primarily upon large beetle larvae, particularly wood-boring Cermabiasiidae beetles, as well as other insects, southern Mongolia, pecans, acorns, hickory nuts, wild grapes, and persimmons. To hunt wood-boring beetle larvae, the bird uses its large bill to wedge and peel off bark from dead trees to expose the larvae tunnels. Reaching some 19 to 21 inches or 48 to 53 centimeters in length with a 30 inch or 26 centimeter wingspan, the ivory billed woodpecker was slash is one of the largest woodpeckers in the world. The plumage of the ivory billed woodpecker is predominantly a shiny black or purple tint. There are white lines extending from the cheeks down the neck and meeting on the back. The ends of the primary feathers are white as well as the whole of the outer secondary feathers. This creates an extensive white on the trailing edge of both the upper and under wing. Ivory bills have a prominent crest, although it is ragged in juveniles. The bird is also somewhat sexually dimorphic, as the crest is red in males, but solid black in females. In adults, the the bill is ivory in color, hence the common name, while it is chalky, chalky white in juveniles. Among North American woodpeckers, the ivory-billed woodpecker is unique in having a bill whose tip is quite flat and laterally, shaped much like a beveled wood chisel. These diurnal birds were known to mate for life, with pairs living and traveling together. The mating season occurred from January to May. During such time, the pair would excavate a cavity in a tree approximately 15 to 70 feet or 4.6 to 21.3 meters off the ground. In order where they would build their nest, where they raise up to four offspring at a time. With said young becoming independent after around five months. Unfortunately, heavy logging, habitat destruction, and hunting for its feathers have reduced ivory billed woodpecker populations so thoroughly that the species is listed by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or the IUCN, as critically endangered, and by the American Birding Association as definitely or probably extinct. The last universally accepted sighting of an American ivory billed woodpecker occurred in Louisiana in 1944. And the last universally accepted sighting of a Cuban ivory billed woodpecker occurred in 1987. Next up is Megalograptus, uh, which is a genus of Eurypterid, which is an extinct group of aquatic arthropods commonly referred to as sea scorpions, which lived throughout the world's oceans during the Catian age of the late Artovician period some 453 to 445 million years ago. The first uh, fossils of Megaloraptors were recovered by L.B. Welch near Liberty, Ohio, in rocks of the Elkhorn Formation in 1874. Welch then presented his findings to be described by Samuel Almond Miller in, 1870, in 1874 as well. Miller mistakenly believed the fossil material consisting of a po- post-abdominal tergite and two fragments of an appendage as the integument of a graptolite, which is a member of the Graptolithinia, an extinct group of colonial pterobranchs, pterobranchs, I'm sorry, and gave it the name Megaloraptus, meaning great writing in Greek, with the species name M. Welchi being in honor of L.B. himself. The status of Megaloraptus as a graptolite was first questioned in 1908 by Rudolf Rudemann, who 
was researching Ordovician graptolites. Rudiman instead recognized the remains of Imwelchi as a Riptrid fossil. Uh, this idea would be confirmed by August Forestay and Edward Oscar Ulrich later in that same year. In the time since, several additional more complete specimens have been recovered. Throughout both the United States and Canada, representing at least five species, M. Welchi, M. Avelolatus, M. Ohioensis, M. Schindelary, and M. Williamsay. Megaloraptus vary considerably in size, with the small species reaching a mere 3.9 inches or 10 centimeters in length, while the largest reach 2.7 feet, or 78 centimeters in length. Megaloraptus was easily distinguishable from other Eurypterids for sporting six sets of appendages, with the third being a particularly massive spine and forward facing, as well as a unique sharp spiked shaped telson, which has circular blades capable of grasping. The carapace of Megaloraptus was vaguely quadratic in shape and flattened, lacking a marginal rim. They, sport kid they sported kidney-shaped compound eyes and six small downward-facing spikes at the front of the mouth, like, well, the front of the head. Certain fossils of Megaloraptus are so well-preserved that researchers know Megaloraptus would have been a mix of brown and black in coloration. In life, Megaloraptus lived near shore in nearshore marine environments feeding upon prey such as trilobites, mollusks, and other invertebrates, as well as conodots and early fish. The Megaraptus was itself preyed upon by large orthocones such as Camaroceras and larger Eurypterids, including other Megaloraptus individuals. Next up is Homolocephalae, which is a genus of Pachylocephalosaurid dinosaur lived throughout what is now Mongolia during the Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous period, roughly 50 million years ago. The first and currently only known remains of homolocephalae, consisting of the pelvis, hind limbs, part of the tail, spine, and an incomplete skull, which were found in the Namek locality of the Namek formation by Hoskala Omaluska and Teresa Mayanaska in 1974. The name homolocephalae is derived from the Greek homolos, meaning even, and kinephale, meaning head in reference to the animal's distinctive flat-shaped skull. Reaching around 5.9 feet or 1.8 meters in length, homolocephalae had rather long legs and a broad, robust pelvis, which has led some paleontologists to suggest that the wide hips were for giving birth to live young. Others have suggested the width served to protect the vital organs from harm during flank headbutting. In life, homolocephalae would have lived in complex herds, if fed upon low-growing vegetation, as well as possibly insects, small vertebrates, and carrion. And next up is Megatherium. But better known as the giant ground sloth, or the Megather, is an extinct genus of ground sloth which lived throughout South America from the Pliocene to the Pleistocene some 5 million to 12,000 years ago. First known remains of Megatherium, consisting of a mostly complete skeleton, were discovered in 1788 by Manuel Torres, on the bank of the Lujan River in Argentina. The fossil was shipped to the Museo Nacional de Ciencias Naturales in Madrid the following year, where it remains to this day. It was reassembled by museum employee Juan Barista Bru in 1795 and subsequently described by Georges Cuvier in 1796. Cuvier assigned the fossil the scientific name Megatherium americanum from the Greek mega meaning great and therion beast and the americanum being referenced to the Americas. In the centuries to follow, dozens of well-preserved specimens have been recovered representing at least eight species. M. americanum, M. altiplanicum, M. gallariole, M. istellarti, M. midianae, M. Paradai and M. Suntti, which are separated into two subgenuses of Megatherium and Pseudomegatherium. With the largest species reaching some 20 feet or 6 meters in length and 7 or 2.1 meters tall when on all fours, and around 8,400 to 10,100 pounds or 3,810 to 4,580 kilograms in weight, Megatherium surpassed most modern elephants in size, 
making it not only one of the largest xenarthrons, but one of the largest mammals known to have ever existed. Megatherium had a robust skeleton with a large pelvic girdle and broad muscular tail. Its large size enabled it to feed at heights unreachable by other contemporary herbivores. Rising on its powerful hind legs and using its tail to form a tripod, Megatherium could support its massive body weight while using its curved claws on its long forelegs to pull down branches. These large animals likely lived in small groups feeding during the day before spending their nights resting inside of caves or large burrows that the animals likely dug using their massive claws. Megatherium became extinct around 12,000 years ago during the Quaternary Extinction Event which claimed most other large mammals throughout the world. Uh, the extinction coincides with the settlement of the Americas and the mul and multiple kill sites where M. Americanum was slaughtered and butchered, suggesting that human hunting helped cause the sloth's extinction. And our final animal week is Albertosaurus, which is a genus of large tyrannosaurid theropod dinosaurs that lived during the northwestern North America during the early Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous period, some 72 to 68 million years ago. The first remains was known to be Albertosaurus, consisting of a partial skull, was collected from an outcrop of the Horseshoe Canyon Formation alongside the Red Deer River in Alberta, Canada. During an 1884 geological survey led by Joseph Burr Tyrell in 1889, Tyrell's colleague Thomas Chesser Weston found an incomplete smaller skull associated with some skeletal material at a locality nearby. The two skulls were assigned to the pre-existing species Lalaps in Crustasus by Edward Drinker Cope in 1892. The name Albertosaurus wouldn't be coined until 1905, when Henry Fairfield Osborne published his description of the iconic Tyrannosaurus rex, during which time he also re-described the previous mentioned skulls, uh, assigning them to their own genus, named after the Canadian province, which was established the very same year where the fossils were found. The type species Albertosaurus sarcophagus, uh, meaning that the full creature's full name, it means flesh-eating lizard of Alberta. Since the first discovery in 1884, fossils of over 30 individuals have been recovered, some of which with int intact skin and organs, which provide scientists with more detailed knowledge of Albertosaurus anatomy than was available for most other Tyrannosaurids. The discovery of 26 individuals in one particular site helped with the research of gregarious behavior, ontogeny, and population biology in dinosaurs. Reaching around 26 to 30 feet, or 8 to 9 meters in length and 3,800 to 5,600 pounds or 1,725 to 2,540 kilograms in weight. Albertosaurus was a fairly large bipedal predator but smaller than Tarbosaurus or Tyrannosaurus rex. It sported a more gracile build akin to Gorgosaurus, sporting a small arms, a heavy head, and a long muscular tail. Albertosaurus had uniquely long and powerful legs, which enabled the animals to comfortably walk at 8 to 13 miles per hour, or 14 to 21 kilometers per hour. Additionally, Albertosaurus sported a set of short bony crests above the eyes that may have been brightly colored in life and possibly used in courtship to attract mates. As always, take care to my guys, gals, non-binary pals. Hope you have a wonderful day.